Watchable True School Sports Empire proudly presents something the boxing game's been missing. Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and we're live once again. Once again, we are live here on True School Sports, building that consistency up. You know, um, we had a good fight a couple days ago. It was definitely a, a, a great way to return to doing the live fight reactions because I, I, I hadn't done one in, in quite a long time. So I'm happy to be back, and I'm just I'm happy. To, um, Thank you to everybody for like the the support and and and, and the outpour and, and just all the kind messages and kind comments I got so far. It's really uh, been very um, just awesome to see. It's been really awesome to see. But I figure you know what, I'm here. I got time to kill. You know, it's Monday night. You know, I figure we make everybody's Monday a little, a little bit better by talking some boxing because there is quite a lot to discuss in the world of boxing. If you're watching the live right now, make sure you smash that like button. If you're watching the replay. Make sure you smash that like button. That would be greatly appreciated. Now, I've had some time to dissect the fight with uh, Jamel Charlo and Brian Castaño. And I got to be honest with you. I don't think it was a fair result. Like a lot of people are sitting here saying Jamel Charlo and Castaño was a fair result. It, it wasn't a fair result. It, it, it wasn't. You know, Charlo, I thought, made some great adjustments. Charlo... Um, definitely showed himself to be a, a true fighter and a, and a true champion, and you you, you know you, you respect you you respect a guy like Jamel Charlo because a guy like Jamel Charlo always comes to fight. A guy like Jamel Charlo always remains dangerous for 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 the entire duration of the fight. But I mean, I've got four eyes and they all work. They all work great. I got four eyes and they work perfectly. And you know, there's twelve rounds and there's there's twelve rounds in a, in a boxing match. And I saw Brian Castaño for the majority of those 12 rounds, for the lion's share of those 12 rounds, controlling the center of the ring. I saw him being the ring general. I saw him with the more clean and effective punching. You know, I saw him not just pressing the action because I, I got I to gotta make myself very clear. You can come forward. You can throw a lot of punches. You could, you could throw a lot of punches. You could be aggressive and all these things. And it doesn't mean anything, but but his aggression and his pressure and the way he came forward, it wasn't it wasn't a waste. It wasn't something that was just happening. He everything was calculated, and I, I thought he fought a very intelligent fight, and and, and he was re rewarded for it. So like to see, you know, like today re, re, I was I was going through boxing scene, and shout out to everybody here. Make sure you smash that like button. Let me know what city, what state you're watching from, and I'll give you a shout out. Um, to see people like Mauricio Suleiman, the WBC president, you know, with his, with, his, with his big, chubby, fat gut to fix his lips and start talking about, oh, well, you know, it was a fair result and it was one of the fairest results in years. Get the fuck out of here. No, it wasn't. You, you, uh, you had a guy in Castaño who should have got the nod and been undisputed champion and you took it from him in the name of sanctioning fees, in the name of... In the name of sanctioning fees, in the name of of of, of the A side guy getting getting uh the, you know the the, the 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 right side of the stick so to speak. So no, I, I'm I'm not trying to hear it. I'm I'm really not trying to hear it about oh this fight was fair and we'll do a rematch. No, to hell with that. I'm sick of everybody saying oh well let's just do a rematch. No, because that 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 that's what's contributing to the corruption in the first place. You guys saying oh it was a close fight let's see a rematch. No, fuck that. The wrong guy won won the fight. The wrong guy won the fight, and the way I see it, Brian Castaño was the man of the division, and I and, and this is me speaking as somebody who was going for Jamel Charlo. So don't 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 come here and say, oh, we're being biased because you wanted Castaño to win. I have no reason to want Brian Castaño to win. You know, truthfully, if you go back and look at my archives, I don't even think I made, I, I ever made a video about Brian Castaño before this fight. So you can't even you can't even you can't even sit here and use that. You know, but. I guess we can't cry over spilt milk. We got to move on with boxing. So that's what we're going to do. There is a lot of things to talk about. Uh, let me see. Got, we got a couple of comments. So I'm going to I'm gonna address those comments. You know, you guys got my undivided attention for about an hour or so. So, you know, whatever you guys want to talk about, drop it in the comments and I'll, and I'll get to it in a timely fashion. MB Boxing Official. What's up, champ? He says, salute. Salute to you, champ. Good to see you. In in your feelings, he says, GGG versus Canelo 2. Scoring thoughts. Um... I mean, I, I thought I thought Golovkin won both fights. I thought Golovkin won both fights, but to me, the second fight was uh, was closer. So the second fight was a little closer than the first. I thought the first fight Golovkin won clearly, and uh, they, they they didn't want to give him his his, his just due either. So it is, it is what it is, man. 
Uh, hey, Sue Sam, what's good, champ? Good to see you, hey, Sue. Much love to you, hey, Sue. He says, What's up, BT? Is Tio versus Cambosa is not happening? Tio versus Cambosa is not selling tickets. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I, I just, I was just reading something about that before, before I went out live. I was uh, taking a quick score of the box news and I just saw something about that. And I'll be honest, look, the Tio Cambosa fight, I was excited about it at first because I thought it was going to be happening here in South Florida at Marlins Park. Apparently, the, the, the tickets weren't moving the way they wanted them to move. Um, so it is what it is. I, I I would just be okay at this point if this fight don't even happen. If it don't even happen, because it's it's really Tio's losing valuable years of his prime, um, or, or, or some valuable years of his career, or some valuable months of his career, in a valuable year of his career. Cambosos needs to stay active, and um, I don't think it's I don't think it does any any one of those two fighters good for you to keep pushing the fight back and pushing the fight back and pushing the fight back and pushing the fight back. And, the fight back. and meanwhile, time is just passing them by. So. Um, I haven't talked to T.O. Sr. Um, I, I haven't talked to him, so I, I don't know what he has to say about this. But um, yeah, man, it's it's just not it's not it's not it's not it's not a good look what's happening with T.O. T.F. Lopez and, and Cambosa at the minute. Shakur Marriott says T.O. versus Josh Taylor, Javante Haney, Ryan. Who you got him beating? Explain why, please. Okay, so T.O. versus Josh. Um, that's actually one of the few fights. Or I'm gonna pick against T.O. I'm, I'm gonna go with Josh Taylor in that fight. I just think Taylor. Too sharp, too strong, and um, I think in the back half of that fight, I think I think um, at the back half of that fight, uh, Josh would really um, the what Lomachenko was able to do in the back half of his fight. I think Josh would take it to that next level, and I think his counter punching, his his, his ability to, to 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 use range and and, and counter punching, you know, I think that's the difference in the fight. Um, Javante, uh, I got Tio, I got Tio in that fight via UD. I got Tio versus Haney by KO. I got Tio versus Ryan by uh, KO, and um, the reason I would pick Tio against Haney is because I I think I think Devin Haney's chinny. I think I think I was there when I was I was I wasn't that far from the ring when he fought Lenares. When I saw when Lenares hit him with that combination, you know I I, I question Devin Haney's durability. Um, I'm not really I'm still not sold on Devin Haney. I'm not I'm not I'm not sold on him. I'm not on the Devin Haney hype train, so to speak. Um, and Ryan Garcia, I'll be honest with you, just to put it to put it. Bluntly, I think Ryan Garcia is too soft to beat <laughs> Tiafimo Lopez. So yeah, those are my, those are my reasons. Those are my uh, my reasons. I sat on the floor. Um, I call it six six. Brian didn't really get off a lot of clean shots. Di Brian was getting off hella clean shots, especially in the first nine rounds. He's beating the brakes off Charlo the first nine rounds. I'm gonna I'm gonna respectfully disagree with you on that one. Um. I sat on the floor. Yeah, okay. What do you think of Lomachenko after T. Fimo's loss? I I think Basi Lomachenko is still one of the best fighters out there. You know, um, I think he's a bit of I think he's a bit of a coward because he's making a lot of excuses when it comes to um, why he lost. I'd rather him just accept the loss rather than make a million excuses. You know, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna get on Deontay Wilder for making excuses, then I'm damn sure gonna get on Lomachenko for making excuses. I don't I don't like when fighters make excuses. Like you go in the ring. If you lose, the other guy's the better man. Move on to the next fight. It doesn't it doesn't mean he'll be the better man than you if you fight a second time or a third time? But on that night, you gotta acknowledge that that man was better than you because if he wasn't better than you, you would have won. You would have won. You know. So I like Lomachenko. I, I think he would beat a lot of these other guys at thirty five, but I'm not a big fan. Uh, Arnold Barbosa versus Jose Cepeda. Is that a good fight? That's a is that fight happening? Is that fight happening? Because I feel like I, I, I saw something in regards to that fight. Uh, it's a good fight. You know, Zapata and Barbosa are two guys that um, and, and are two guys that are right on that cusp of, of world title, of, 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 of being world champions and challenging for a world title. Um, you know, so that, I think I think right now it's it's a good time for that fight to happen if, if it is happening. Earl Spence is gonna beat the brakes off Manny Pacquiao. I'm telling you, hey, maybe he will, maybe he won't. Uh, I'm gonna, I, I don't think he will. I think even if he beats Manny, it's gonna be a hard fight for him. I, I, I'm still gonna go with Pacquiao. Castaño was good at those flurries like Oscar De La Hoya and Sugar Ray at trying to steal rounds. Yeah, he is, but he wasn't stealing no rounds. He was landing, he was landing, he was landing these a lot of these shots on Charlo. He was landing these shots. You know, he was rendering Charlo ineffective a lot in that fight because he would throw punches and then he would go on that high, high guard kind of like a Marlon Starlin and he would parry the shots with his gloves. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna dis I'm gonna uh disrespectfully disagree with you. You know, I I, I think he should have got the nod, and I and I and I think it was just um, I think it was just a way for PBC, Al Heyman, and all parties involved to make more money. How does boxing correct itself? Uh, with the questionable judges, does it do, do these judges need to explain why they made the error? Well, no, boxing doesn't have that kind of accountability for judges. Um, I mean, there's, there's 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 a couple ways you can go about it. I really believe like if if you're a judge, right, and and you're selected to judge a a uh, a championship fight, I feel like you should have a, an extended body of work of of judging uh, fights, you know, on the world class level, you know, in in that particular state. Because what happens a lot of times, what what happens a lot of times um, in these big fights, and I and, and I I actually alluded to this when I was live. I, I actually alluded to this. I said a lot of times you can get you can get judges from out of nowhere that you never heard of, never seen, never heard of, and they judge just that fight. They they have no body work before the fight. They have no body work after the fight. They're just brought in for that fight, and 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 that's a bot judge. And I think I haven't done any research on Vasquez, so I can't say if that's what Vasquez was. Nelson Vasquez, the one who scored the fight, one seventeen, one eleven, in favor of Jamel Charlo. But I didn't. I I can't recall hearing about Nelson Vasquez before this fight. And I'm gonna be very on the lookout to see if I hear about him after the fight. So. Um. Michael Ryan Pitts, shout out to my man Michael Ryan Pitts. He says he had it for Castaño, 116 to 114 when he watched it and scored it live. Uh, I haven't I haven't rewatched it either. I've seen highlights. <laughs> shout out to one that says, says, so as I've stated many times, I'm not home. This is not my house. This is not even my room. Everybody thinks this is my room. Everybody keeps saying to close my closet and you know why is my mattress standing up? This isn't my mattress. That's not my closet. This ain't my room. This is the, the, I'm at my friend's house right now. This is just, I'm I'm in I'm in a certain part of South Florida visiting uh, friends and 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 family and people like that. And um, so I stay I stay with one of my friends whenever I come to Broward County, this part of Florida. And um, yeah, this is the room I come shooting. So it's not I don't I don't like touching my friend's stuff, but this is his room and this is this is where it's quiet. This is where it's comfortable when I come here. And make these videos you know personally i know a lot of people could complain about the background and say oh well the background looks bad and whatnot and yeah it does but you know what it don't matter to me we got we got we got to get it how we live we, we, we got we, we got to get it how we live here on true school sports I don't, I don't care if there's a mattress standing up i don't care i don't care if there's an ice cream truck in the background when it comes when it comes to talking this boxing we won't get it by any means necessary but i have no clue why that mattress is standing up <laughs> Shout out to everybody here, man. Look, man, hey, I'm, I'm here and I'm, and I'm happy to be talking to you guys. I see there's 21 people here. All right, look, if you ain't going to super chat, that's fine. But make sure you smash that like button so the rest of YouTube knows that, that, that I'm here. Right? We got 22 people and we got only six, six likes. Stop, stop being stingy. Stop being stingy, people. People are too observant. Yeah, it's, it's okay. Um, is it okay to score a 10-10 round? If it's a close call, well, when I score fights, generally speaking, I don't I don't try to score 10, 10 rounds because I believe the way you're supposed to score every single round is you're supposed to go by the three criteria of judging a round, which is effective aggression. You know, effective aggression basically just means if when you're throwing punches, how effective are these punches? How effective is um, the aggression you are showing? How, is it is it, it, it are these punches backing your opponent up? Are they keeping your opponent at bay? Um, are they bruising your opponent up? You know, are they buckling his legs? Are they stunning him? You know, effective aggression. You have ring generalship, which is basically meaning, you know, who is commanding the real estate in the ring? Who is controlling where the fight is fought? Um, and that sometimes can be very subjective, but who is controlling where the fight is fought and the, and the pace in which it's being fought at? And then um, defense, which is pretty self-explanatory, you know, how 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 often are you blocking these shots? You know, um, and things like that. So I feel like if you use those, two, if you use the, if you're consistent every round and using those three scoring criteria, nine and a half times out of ten, you shouldn't have a ten ten scorecard. But that's just my opinion. Shakur Marriott, nice nice last name by the way. 
He says, how good is Caleb Plant and do you think he has a chance against Canelo? I know I'm going to get grilled, but, but I think he does because I watched the Billy Joe Saunders fight and I thought he was getting a rhythm. And by he, he means Billy Joe Saunders. And now, I'll be honest with you. So when you look at the three world, if, if Canelo was to fight Caleb Plant, that would be the, the, the third and final champion he's fought at 168. I think Caleb Plant has the best chance of anybody at 168 to defeat Canelo for a couple of reasons. Number one, um... Unlike, I'm, I'm going to give my reasons. Unlike Caleb Smith and Billy Joe Saunders, Caleb Plant is actually a, a legit 168 pounder in the sense that like he's not, he's not a, he's not a, he's not a fighter that has to cut weight, you know, weight drain himself to get the weight. And he's not a fighter that's blowing himself up to get to the weight. 168 is his optimal weight. It's where he operates the best at. So, you know, that's, a, that's a positive he has going for it in his favor. Second of all, I think in terms of pure boxing skills and agility and things like that, you know, Caleb Plant's the best fighter Canelo's fought in the in the super middleweight division thus far. Um, you know, and I think his power, the sharpness, the sharpness of his punches is very, very, very underrated. People underrate the sharpness of um, Caleb Plant's punches. So yeah, you're. I, I'm actually gonna agree with you. I know a lot of people, a lot of channels on YouTube would say Caleb Plant is garbage. He's trash, and all these things. No, this is Caleb Plant of the champions. Canelo's fight of '68 is the toughest fight there for him. Tougher than Billy Joe Saunders. Tougher than Callum Smith. Definitely tougher than Callum Smith. Definitely tougher than Callum Smith. But truthfully, you know, I'm not gonna knock Canelo. He fights Caleb, Caleb Plant because it's uh, like I said, you know, it's undisputed. You can't. You can't. You can't knock. You can't knock. Um, you can't knock Canelo for wanting to go undisputed. But like, I'm trying to see him fight. You, you, you guys already know who, who I want to see him fight. If, 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 if you watch this channel, you, you know who I want to see Canelo fight. Uh oh, Al the Pal, what's good, champ? Shout out to my man Al the Pal out there in H Town. Shout out to H Town. Shout out to everybody. Make sure you guys smash that like button. We here, man. It's the Untouchable True School Sports Empire. Back like I never left. Back like and better than ever. We here talking that boxing, the real boxing talk. Jairo Galvez. He says, BT, I ain't disappointed at Charlo. I was never high on his boxing, but I was more high on his personality. A draw was fair, at least to Castaño, even if he was robbed. At least he didn't lose his belt in this in, in the decision. I mean, I guess that's a, that, 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 that's how you could look at it. But I'm not I'm not looking at it that way. I'm I'm not looking at it that way. I'm looking at it as the fact that this is a this is this was a legacy fight. This was a legacy fight. This was a fight where you know you had two guys vying for undisputed, and one guy clearly did more than the other. Two deserve to be undisputed, and they and, and they wouldn't allow him to have his moment in the sun. They wouldn't allow him to have the fight. If they would have scored a fight like 115, 113, and it was close, maybe they could have did a rematch because I think the fight was definitely exciting enough for a rematch, but. It was um, trash ass judging. Tr trash ass judging. All right, so let me let me uh, get us some more comments. I see we got a lot of we got a lot of people in here. We got a lot a lot of good comments. Um, the real El Jefe, my main man, Felipe. What's good, champ? What's up? Ugh. Fresh BX. What it do, champ? Good to see you. In your feelings, ask the question, bro, what are the qualities that a boxer needs to have to be a star in the boxing world? I'm an amateur, and I want to know what qualities would you need to develop to be a pay-per-view star? Why was Mayweather um, a big name? Well, I, I appreciate your, 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 your question, um, champ. You know, first and foremost, you could have everything in the world. You could have the looks, you could have the mouthpiece, but if you can't fight, it don't matter. It don't, it don't, it don't, it don't really matter. It don't really matter who... Um, it doesn't matter what, what, what other qualities you have in the ring if you can't fight. So I think the best thing you could do is, is get your foundations in order. Get, you know, become the best fighter you can possibly be. Um, become a fighter that can win fights. <laughs> just win. Just, just win. You know, um, you know if, you're a, if you're a fighter that has knockout power, then, you know, it, the more knockouts you can get, the more excitement you'll create. You know, generally speaking, the, 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 the thing that appeals to casual boxing fans, hardcore boxing fans, and boxing fans of all levels, ages, and whatnot is knockout. So um, have that in order, you know, but don't, but don't try to, don't try to be someone you're not. If you're not a knockout artist, don't be a knockout artist, you know what I'm saying? Um, aside from that, the most, the, the main thing you need 
to be a star in boxing is the right people behind you, you know? And I, cause I've, I've seen it, you know, I, I've got friends in boxing and I've seen it so many times in boxing where you, you, could, you could be the best fighter in the world, but if you don't have the right people in your corner to, to, to pull the strings and position you and to, 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 to get you the right fights at the right time, then, then um, it doesn't matter how good of a fighter you are, you know? And um, I would say, you know, practice, practice um, being presentable and speaking well on camera. You know, uh, make sure you develop your personality as, as a human being and, and, and be someone that when you open your mouth, you have things to say that, that and, and people get excited to hear you speak. Doesn't mean you gotta be someone that's, um, don't, don't, be, don't be someone you're not. You know, if you can trash talk, trash talk. If you've got a mouthpiece, and you're confident enough to trash talk, great. But um, just, 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 just be marketable. Just be, just be a marketable fighter. Be, be someone who's marketable. Be someone that is interesting outside the ring. Have if you have an interesting story outside the ring, you know, tell that story. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable and tell that start and, and tell that story because a lot of times I, I know a lot of fighters. Like I got fighters that are friends right now, and I see how they are in the media. I see how they are in the media, and then I've seen how they are when I hang out with them you know, my, 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 my friends that are fighters and I, I know that the two different people and a lot of times the problem a lot of, a lot of fighters have is that they're afraid, they're, a lot of fighters are afraid to be their actual selves because they're afraid of criticism that, that they'll get from the, the public and whatnot. So you gotta be comfortable in your own skin. You gotta be comfortable to be yourself. You gotta be content to be yourself. You gotta know that, 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 that you are an exceptional human being and be content to be just that, an exceptional human being and make sure you just work hard and and, and, and put on great performances and, and, and you'll be well on your merry way. Let me see, let me see. Uh, every year, yeah, every year, every year someone's involved in a legacy fight. It's, it's unfortunate. Felipe, oh, here you go, here come Felipe. He says, a legacy fight that we got to see, that we get to see again. Why are y'all complaining? It was a draw regardless of the bad card. It shouldn't have been a draw, though. It shouldn't have been a draw. The, 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 wrong, the wrong outcome happened. Brian Castaño should have won that fight. And they took it from him. Sebastian, the technician, Santana, one of South Florida's very own, coming to you right through that amateur scene. You know, everybody say, what's up to Sebastian? You know, a good young local fighter in the South Florida area. Um, trained down there, working hard, grinding hard at Flacco's Boxing Gym. Make sure you guys remember that name, Sebastian Santana, because he's coming, man. I remember... I saw Sebastian when he didn't have he he didn't have no amateur fights and now he's going from young boy and he's coming of age you know he's starting to get really big you know good to see you Sebastian Mayweather was a big name because people wanted to pay to see him lose be your own fighter bro fight the best and be dedicated there you go man there you go free game here on True School Sports True School Sports. How true school sports is out here solving problems in the boxing world. What is your favorite all-time weight class? And this is my man Isaac West. Shout out to Isaac West. Isaac West, uh, my favorite weight class. That's a good question. I never, I never thought about what's my favorite weight class in the history of boxing because I, I like all the weight classes. But my favorite weight class, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I think, I, th I think my favorite weight class is actually the he it's it's actually the he the heavyweight division of all time. It has to be the heavyweight division because, um, and I know that's like such a cliche answer, but like the heavyweight division, just the storylines, the characters that have come in the heavyweight division, um, the fighters that have won against all odds in the heavyweight division, you know, I, they, they say as boxing goes, they say as the heavyweight division goes, so does boxing. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to go with the heavyweight division. Gorilla Mafia says, how important is footwork? How important is footwork? Listen, man. As a, as a fighter, there's nothing on planet Earth more important than your footwork. It's from, from, from a skill set standpoint. There's nothing more important than your footwork because your footwork is going to determine, you know, um, where you're throwing your punches from. Your footwork is going to determine how the fight is fought. Your footwork is going to determine how, how, how hard you can throw a punch, how fast you can throw a punch, how quick you can, you can get out of the way of a punch. You know, all of this is very important. Footwork is very important. Hyrule Galvez, BT, the heavyweight division is the most inactive division where the champions fight once a year. BT, you forgot about 118. 118 is a hell of a division. Joe, what's good, Joe? He says, glad to see you, True School Sports. What's up, BT? Shout out, I like the talk. Yeah, man, we here. 
you know, just trying to keep keep it going, keep the streets keep the streets fed. You know, some people don't like when I say that when I use that term, but I like that term. We keeping the streets fed. Just to, just wanted to say what's up to you guys and let you know I'm good and see what's up with you guys and see what people want to talk about because there's 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 a lot to talk about in boxing. Mm -mm. Let me see. Yeah, good, 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 good comment by my man Chief Fred Four. He says, "Yep, you have to have money behind you." People forget that Josh Taylor was a nobody fighting for a small Irish promotional company until he won the World Boxing Super Series tournament. Um, and you're right, he fought for uh, I think the name of the company was Cyclone Cyclone Promotions. I think that was the name of the company. But um, most people don't even realize this about Josh Taylor. Josh Taylor actually made his professional debut in America on a PBC card. I can't remember which card, but it was a PBC card. But uh, he had he had he had to come up the hard way. You know, a lot of people didn't know who Josh Taylor was, and I I, I didn't find out who he was till like twenty seventeen, something like that. <laughs> Hyrule says, "BT, that looks like your closet." I'm not gonna lie, that don't look nothing like my closet. First of all. My closet at my house is way more organized than this. The closet at my house is more organized than this. I be having my towels folded up. I have like my hats and, and everything organized. You know, this is not my closet. Don't you ever disrespect me like that, Harold. My, my, my closet is airtight, organized. <laughs> uh oh, there he goes. Lawrence RBE says, true school. I'm so, I'm so surprised by Tyson Fury's actions. I'm not. I mean, Tyson Fury says Tyson Fury has told you guys. He said, "How can I? How can a fighter predict what I'm gonna do when I myself can't even predict what I'm gonna do?" You know, the fight got pushed back. It's still happening, unfortunately. Like for me personally, I don't really care about the third Wilder Fury fight. I want, I want, I want to see. On, I, I'd, I'd much rather see the Joshua versus Fury fight um, because I don't think Deontay Wilder can beat Tyson Fury. I think whether they fought on July 24th or October 9th or. Whenever I think Tyson Fury is gonna beat the brakes off Wilder, so to me it don't matter if it happens now or later. Wilder not winning that fight because he's had what he's had over over freaking was it nineteen rounds? He said nineteen rounds to solve Tyson Fury. Still hasn't, still hasn't, still hasn't done it. But people, people, people want me to sit here and think they want they want they want me to sit here and think that because Malik Scott finally taught him how to feint and throw a jab that all of a sudden now you know now it's gonna be different. Listen. The minute Tyson Fury touches Deontay Wilder, he's going to revert back to being Deontay Wilder. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. Now, if Deontay Wilder fought somebody else, had a couple, if he had a couple of tune-up fights, he had a couple camps to, to really, really, really implement what he could get um, with Malik Scott in his skill set, then maybe, okay, I could see what you're saying, but not not in one training camp. He's not gonna, he's not just going to, in one training camp, you know, go uh, tweak, tweak all these things and, 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 and you know, Start outboxing Tyson Fury and setting up the right hand. It's just not. It's not. It's not going on that way. But if it listen, if it does, great for him. I'll admit that I was wrong. But man, Wilder Fury three is trash. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of time. We we already know who the better fighter is. Deontay Wilder fought Tyson Fury coming up off his couch, and he couldn't beat him. Then he then when Tyson Fury had more time to train, it wasn't a close fight. He got killed, and the only reason this fight is interesting is because Tyson, Deontay Wilder spent a year and a half making excuses, and people want to see if he can do anything different. I mean, it is what it is. But I, I want to see Josh. I want to see the other guys in the heavyweight division get a, get a big fight. Like I want to see Ruiz fight. I, I I'd rather see Ruiz fight Wilder or Joshua fight Wilder or Joshua fight Fury or you know something like that. You know, change change it up. Sing a new song. Sing a new song. Michael Ryan Pitt says, uh, "BT, why answer why there's Wilder fanboy channels and M and AJ fanboy channels, but not Fury? Why is there a Fury bias? I know he does wrong too, but the bias has made made a fan has made me a fan. So I'm just wondering. As you know, that's a great point, Michael. And I remember me and you were talking about this the other day. Um, I think if when it comes to AJ, right? AJ is the golden boy of British boxing. Period. Like not just for heavyweight boxing, but." 
British boxing, period. He is literally British boxing. So um, I think AJ ticks a lot of boxes for a lot of people. And AJ made a great name for himself and, and got a, he, he, he built up a lot of great momentum when Fury wasn't in the picture. Wilder is the only American heavyweight um, that's been consistent at the top level for so long. Um, and a lot of people with, with agendas that have fuck all to do with boxing um, support Deontay Wilder here on YouTube. Uh, people don't like Tyson Fury. Be uh, there aren't Fury fanboy channels because I think Tyson Fury, um, he gets pissed too many people off. He pisses off, like he pisses off the he pisses off the the, the the LDBC and he pisses off the Brits. So the only people that I find that that really like Tyson Fury are the people that don't have any agendas, that don't have any sort of biases, you know, that just like boxing. So that that's why I like Fury. I like Fury just because, first of all, is is is. He's the I know he's the best fighter in the weight class. That's that's not even debatable. I mean, every time there's been the biggest fights that have taken place in the heavyweight division over the last five years, he's won them all. So, and he'll continue winning them all as long just so long as he stays focused and in the gym. He's not losing to Deontay Wilder or Anthony Joshua. Wait, BT, what's the if Wilder wins? What's the excuse? There is no excuse. I'll just congratulate him and say that Deontay Wilder was a better man. I don't make excuses. That's what that's what that's what you guys do. The Wilder fans make excuses. The LDBC makes excuses. The the Wilder Reds make excuses. Like if Tyson Fury gets his ass knocked the hell out and he's splattered all over the floor, I'm just gonna say De Deontay Wilder is the better fighter. And all those adjustments he made with Malik Scott, they paid off. And I'll give him, I'll give him his just due. I'm not I'm not no hater. I'm not no hater when it comes to you know being wrong. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a hater. But I know if I know for a fact. I know for a fact if if Deontay Wilder gets his ass knocked out again and Tyson Fury beats him in a more convincing fashion, I know the excuses will continue, the the, the rumors will continue, uh, uh, all all the bullshit that's happened after the rematch will continue. That's why I don't want the third fight to happen. Not because Wilder might win. Wilder is not gonna beat Tyson Fury. It's only because if Fury wins, it does nothing for Fury. Like you guys will never be satisfied. You will always say he sucks. You will always say he cheated. You will always say something was wrong with the gloves. You will always say he he ate wild boar meat. You will always say all kinds of stuff. Other than the fact that he's better than Deontay Wilder. Which he's already proven twice. Shout out to my man Andre. He says, BT, can you share to us what about the boxing business disgusts you the most? What about the boxing business to discuss me the most? Okay, what 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 could I share without putting myself in danger? Um, I guess what pisses me off about the boxing business the most is just you know probably probably seeing how how promoters and managers and promotional companies are always like three or four steps ahead trying to fatten up other fighters so that they can feed them to the top fighters i mean i know that's not something that should piss me off because that's just the nature of the business but that i don't know why for some reason that pisses me off um maybe maybe like how prevalent ped use is in boxing like it's really ridiculous how much peds are used in boxing like i know that what's reported out there you know you guys already know there's a lot of ped use in boxing but whatever you, but however much you think fighters are taking peds whatever it, it's like 10 times more it's like 10 times more than whatever you guys think it is. Like I would I would venture to say like 80 to 85% of boxers at the world class level are on PEDs, you know? And it gets so it gets to a point where if you're fighter you it gets to a point where if you're a fighter who's not on PEDs, right? If you're if you're a fighter who's not on PEDs at all and you and you just you're you're clean and you, and you're doing all the right things, it gets to a point where you almost feel like you had to take PEDs just so you can be safe so you could be on somewhat of an even playing field but then what, what's fucked up about it is fighter a might take peds right and he gets away with it and because he got money he's got everybody behind him but if fighter b takes peds you know they they, they report him taking peds and then it then it gets then it, then it gets out there in the media and then his, his reputation gets tarnished and his legacy gets tarnished but meanwhile the fighter that everybody thinks is squeaky clean ain't so squeaky, ain't so squeaky clean so that's probably the thing I would say um, pisses me off most about the boxing business. There's so many people on PEDs. Um, 
Yeah, no, controversy is the best thing that can happen for anybody in boxing, whether it's a fighter or a promoter. I, I agree. See, there's a lot of comments that I missed, so if I, if I miss your comment, just comment it again and I'll get to it. Word of the day says, uh, do you do you think Wilder can beat Joshua? Yes, I think um, with his power, his, with his power, his quickness, his gunslinging ways, you know, I, I I think that's a that's a, that to me is a more interesting fight than than Fury versus AJ or Fury versus um or, or or Wilder versus Fury. I'd rather see Wilder versus AJ. I think stylistically that that's a more interesting fight because Anthony Joshua has developed so much so to the point that um AJ has developed so much so to the point where I think like you know. I would maybe I don't know I maybe slightly I, I would slightly favor Anthony Joshua, but you know that's only if he don't get touched. So I I, I want to see that fight. Someone said uh, Tank versus Tiafimo, who wins? Uh, give me uh, give me Tiafimo Lopez uh, UD. Hyro says BT we need to start True School Sports Promotions. I got it mapped out. We're gonna do a series. Of shows on Chiller and then become the face <laughs> of ESPN Plus. All right, there you go, Hyro Hyro Galvez, the, the 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 president, the president of marketing and promotion for True School Sports Promotions. <laughs> that's that's your official title. Is Rolly getting fanned up for Tank? Rolly might just get manhandled. My, Rolly might man, just manhandle Tank and get DQ'd. He might. Yeah, who knows, man? That that, that fight could be happening next. Fresh BX uh, says, "True school, you're saying the same thing Paulie said. A little bit of Lonnie B. Yeah, what what that what Lonnie B. and uh, Paulie have told you about PED use in boxing, I can confirm. Like I know for a fact. I mean, I know fighters right now who are on PEDs. That I, I I'm not gonna say it on camera, but like I know for a fact they're on PEDs. And if you guys would be on PEDs, it would, it, would, it, would, it would break your heart to know that they're on PEDs. So that's why, like when I when I when I made that video a couple weeks ago, and I was in a really sucking place." Um, that was one of the things that ha that had me in a second place is just is seeing like it's still a fight it's still boxing you still gotta go in there you still gotta punch your opponent but it's it pissed me off seeing how much they try to manipulate outcomes in boxing I mean I knew this always existed but it's different when you're in Vegas oh snap Pete shout out to my guy Pete Pete out there in Texas he says. Dallas, we ain't her. You from Dallas? I'm from, you from Dallas? I'm from Dallas too. Dallas, we ain't her. In my Maurice Hooker voice. Good to see you, Pete. What do you think of Regis uh, versus Mikey Garcia? Regis said the fight is to be announced. I think that's a great fight. Um, Regis can't really, has been able to be, secure those big fights since he got with PBC. This would be the, um, this would be the first, this would be the first time that he's able, he's been able to get to get a marquee fight with um, PBC, and so I'm happy for Regis. He needs a fight like that. Um, Mikey Garcia hasn't boxed. Mikey Garcia hasn't boxed since the Jesse Vargas fight. Um, a lot of people are gonna say Mikey's gonna win that fight. I'm going. I, I think Regis is gonna get him, man. I think Regis is too strong. Too is too strong for Mikey, and I I, I don't know. I, Mikey. I had questioned how much his heart really, really, really is still in boxing. You know, he's always had those questions about. We know Mikey Garcia is an extremely talented fighter. We know that. Um, we know Mikey Garcia is an extremely talented fighter, but the question with him hasn't hasn't has been about talent. It's been about, you know, his level of dedication to the sport because he's always come off as a guy that, you know, doesn't like boxing. I think he even said in an interview he don't even like boxing like that. So I understand where he's coming from too because I mean I, I, I was I was there I was there not too long ago so I'm not gonna. Hate on him for that, but it'll be a good fight. It'll be a, it'll be a, it'll be a, a good fight for the 140 pound division. And look, if my if Mikey can win that fight, Mikey Garcia overnight becomes one of the best 140 pounders in the world because Regis is one of the best 140 pounders in the world. You know, he's a he's a very um, he was world champion. You know, a guy that gave Josh Taylor, who's right now the man in the division, one of the best pound for pound fighters in the sport. He gave Josh Taylor the toughest fight. So right now, he's one of the top guys in the division, and by beating him. Mikey becomes top guy, and then who knows? Mikey could be in line for some massive paydays and some big fights um, as he looks towards the latter stages of his career. Let me see, let me see, let me see. 
BT, <laughs> BT found out Santa Claus wasn't real. Yeah, the Tooth Fairy didn't come. Santa Claus isn't real. I always knew Santa Claus wasn't real. Um, what are your thoughts on TFM Lopez dropping the IBF? Have you heard any updates? I was reading something about it just like just before I came on the live, um, but I don't know anything much more than like the article I read. Basically, my opinion on it is this: If Tio's gonna drop the IBF, I think that he should just move up to one forty. Oh, move up to one forty. There's no se there's no sense there's no sense there's no sense in in staying at one thirty five and having three belts if you're not going to um. You're not gonna, you know, just, just go to 140, man. Go to 140. You're killing yourself to make the weight. Everyone knows that's been following Tio for the last three, four years. Knows that he's been he he's been struggling to make 135 literally since the beginning of 2019. So just get the hell, get out the weight class. Go to 140 and and, and just start that next, start the next chapter of your career. If 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 he dropped the IBF belt. Yeah, make sure y'all smash that like button. Uh, and, but yeah, Al, uh, Pete, Pete goes to all the boxing fights. Pete, especially if it's Canelo, Canelo could fight on Canelo could fight on freaking Mars, and Pete's gonna go to Mars to watch Canelo fight. Pete, Pete has a uh, Pete, Pete has a has a no boxing, no life soap dispenser in his bathroom right now. <laughs> And nah, Earl Spence, Earl Spence ain't gonna stop Manny Pacquiao. Earl, 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 Earl Spence is, this is like I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove my feelings for a second. This this is probably what's gonna happen. Manny Pacquiao, Manny Pacquiao is probably gonna out Manny Pacquiao is probably gonna outwork Earl Spence. He'll win like seven rounds to five, and then he'll get robbed in the cards. That's probably what's gonna happen. But I'm gonna say I've been saying Manny Pacquiao's gonna win, so I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with my prediction, my initial prediction. Manny, Pac Manny Pacquiao is gonna be Earl Spence. If they both fight at their absolute best, he should be Earl Spence. Earl Spence's style is tailor-made for many. Earl Spence drinks and smokes too much. <laughs> nah, man. I think I. I mean, he might have at one point, but I think I think Earl. I think Earl. Uh, Earl's taking boxing a little bit more serious these days. So I, I expect Earl to come in and, and, and be very, very dangerous uh, toward Manny Pacquiao. BT, do you think Al Bernstein should retire? I think he's too old. His commentary is boring, and he smokes a lot of cigarettes. I, I see. I didn't know all that. Um, do I think he should retire? I mean, look, it's not for me to say if he should re retire or shouldn't retire. You know that that, that that's Showtime's job. Um, I have a lot of respect for Al Bernstein. He's been in the game a long time, but he sh he should he should definitely stop. He should definitely stop smoking, though. That much I can tell you. It's not good for you. BT, who do you got on your pound for pound list, and why do you think Earl beats Crawford? I've never said Earl can beat Crawford. I, I I think quite the opposite. I think I think Terrence Crawford will beat the brakes off Earl Spence. That's why they don't want to make the fight happen. That's why Earl Spence. That's why Earl Spence has been avoiding him all this time. He'd rather he'd rather he'd rather um fight Manny Pacquiao because he'll get paid more and it's a good business decision than fight Terrence because Ter Terrence 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 is his direct rival like. That it, it means more to the ego of Earl Spence if he loses to Terrence Crawford than if he loses to Manny Pacquiao. So that fight ain't happening. And honestly, look, I wanna I wanna make something very clear from, from, from just being in Vegas and seeing how shit actually really works. Nobody's ducking anybody. Like the, 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 there's only there's only a, there's only a handful of fighters of boxing that I can say are ducking each other. Terrence Crawford ain't ducking Earl Spence, and it really, truthfully, like I get mad at Earl because he plays into the bullshit that people are feeding him. But um, but like, freaking, I don't even think Earl Spence is ducking Terrence Crawford. If anything, it's just it's the guys behind them. It's always the guys behind these people. He told Virgil Ortiz that he wasn't ready. He did say that, and I, I and I still want to see that fight happen. And, Virgil's fighting one uh, one of the guys that gave Terrence the toughest fights in Kavaluska. So if, if Virgil wins that fight next, if Terrence maintains the same energy, I'll, we're gonna keep putting that pressure on Terrence. Why do you think Terrence Crawford isn't a star? 
I think Terrence Crawford isn't a star because Terrence Crawford hasn't got the big fights and Terrence Crawford doesn't talk trash that often. He should fight Danny Gar. No. Oh, but, oh, Raphael. Shout out to Calvo. I didn't even realize that was Raphael. He said, what up, BT? If Manny beats Earl, he should fight Danny Garcia to end his career in the Philippines in the new, in the new stadium. Nah, I don't think so. Danny Garcia's been getting too many paydays for me. <laughs> Dan, 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 Danny's been getting too many paydays. Crawford has no activity you can't put in pound for pound. You're right. You know, you're actually right. So, if he's not pound for pound, I, Terrence might, be, might not be pound for pound, but pound for pound's up for grabs. You and me, Felipe, me, me and Felipe, you, me and you both know this. That pound for pound crown is up as is out, it's as up for grabs as it's ever been. You got Josh Taylor who's undisputed. Truthfully, look, if you want to be honest, when we look at the fighter that's fighting the best, doing what they're supposed to do, not messing about, going undisputed, fighting the top guys out there and looking good while doing it, it's really Josh Taylor showing you a whole full a, a whole skill set, a whole body of work. I think he's got a great claim to the pound for pound throne. BT, the media has portrayed Crawford as the weakest champion at 147. They're putting the ring belt on the line for Spence versus Manny. Yeah, they are. And it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate that, that, that it's come to this. But it's just um, just boxing politics, man. Like, truthfully, the only weight classes in boxing where, you know, you get guys that are, that, where, where you're not going to get as much BS is like 122, 118, 115, because there's not as much money to screw around. They have, they, have, they have to make those big fights in order. In order for them to make money and be relevant in boxing, they got to make those big fights. Otherwise, nobody would care about that, those divisions. And that's the truth. Mm -mm. I can't put Crawford pound for pound. That's fine. Honestly, Josh Taylor's pound for pound. Fuck it. Josh Taylor's pound for pound. Because we, because Crawford's, Crawford's inactive and Canelo's ducking Demetrius Andrade, so we can't put Crawford pound for pound. We can't put Canelo pound for pound. We're gonna put the guy that's representing boxing in the best way possible right now, pound for pound. We're, we're, we're gonna put Josh Taylor, pound for pound number one, until he, until someone knocks him off, or the monster. As if Bud wouldn't have fought Manny. I, I think Bud would have fought Manny. Josh Taylor isn't no pound for pound number one. Why not? Why can't why can't Josh? I'm not saying look I, look. I haven't really sat down and thought about who's pound for pound because this shit changes like every two months. Every two months the, it could change. But why why can he not be pound for pound? He's being all the best guys in his weight class. I think like the combined record of his opponent, his last like five opponents is like they only have, they only have, they, only have, they only have like one loss between them and like over a hundred wins. Um, he's winning these fights easily. He just went on the road in hostile territory and fought Jose Ramirez and, you know, beat him in pretty convincing fashion. Josh Taylor couldn't compete at 147. That's what pound for pound means. Who, who told you that lie? Who told you that lie that Josh Taylor can't compete at 147? He could compete at 147. There's only one guy at 147 that could beat him. And that's probably who he's in a fight. He's in a fight the only guy at 147 that could beat him. Which is Terrence Crawford. Ain't nobody else over there gonna beat him at 147. And even Terrence Crawford ain't safe. I got all the 147s beating Josh Taylor. I, everybody, everybody says that, but nobody 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 ever explains. Nobody actually ever explains why Josh Taylor will lose. They can say, oh, I have them all beating Josh Taylor. Why do you have them beating Josh Taylor? Like at least. My guy in your feelings says he thinks Spence is too big for Josh Taylor. I think I Spence Spence wouldn't do anything with Josh Taylor. Spence would get freaking killed by Josh Taylor. They fought. It's an easy fight for Josh. Um, upcoming boxing events that you're gonna attend. I'm not trying to. Uh, well, outside of Florida, I'm not gonna. Try, I'm not leaving South Florida for like a good minute. I'm not trying. I'm not trying to leave South Florida for the rest of this calendar year. So if you see me any fights, it's just gonna be local fights. So the, to answer your question, the next two boxing events that I'm going to attend 
is gonna be i think the dates were um august 21st you got uh bad promotions it's like a local a local promotional company here i'll be at that fight and then the, the fight that i'm most excited to go to is the september 10th card here in south florida in delray beach at the delray beach tennis center you're gonna have the return of one of the best fighters in boxing that nobody's ever heard of but you know hopefully as he gets active i think he'll be a champion because i truly think that this guy might be the best fighter from South Florida. And that's saying something because, you know, the South Florida boxing scene, we, we, we produce some of the best fighters in the sport. We got to, we produce T.F. Lopez. We produce T.F. Lopez. We produce Xander Zayas, Dominique Francis. But this kid, Lawrence Newton, this Lawrence Newton kid is different. And he's, he's come back to the ring September 10th. So that's, that's the next card I'm going to. And I'm very, very excited for that one. Taylor had a debatable fight with Regis. Spence is at least two times that. Okay, every fight is different. Every fight is different. The Spence jab ain't no joke. Man, the Josh Taylor jab ain't no joke. The Josh Taylor foot speed ain't no joke. The Josh Taylor boxing IQ ain't no joke. The toughness. Every, he's got every last ingredient that, that a great fighter that you ask for in a great fighter. My man Hyrule, my man Hyrule is all, he's all in on the Josh Taylor hype, hype train. He says, BT, you know Carver's going to lose to Josh Taylor. Because Josh fought better opposition. Taylor is too good. He needs to go to 175 for a challenge. Okay. I don't know about all that, but... F it. Why not? YOLO. You can't say Crawford... Listen, you can't say Josh Taylor... If you say Josh Taylor had no competition, but you say Crawford had competition, had no competition, that, 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 that's a contradiction because they have a common opponent. They have a common opponent. They both fought Victor Postal, so... You know, you can't, you can't really say that. Now, I'll definitely, I'll, I'll, I'll agree and I'll say that Josh Taylor had a way harder and a way tougher um, road to Undisputed at 140 than Crowder. I, I can agree on that, but not, I'm not going to sit here and say that, um, any of that. Woo! Felipe with a super chat. Okay, uh, Felipe says, and thank you, Felipe. Felipe says, if Spence beats Pac-Man, is he number one pound for pound BT? Oh my God. That's a great question. Damn. Depends on how he beats him. Depends on how he beats him. Um, he'll definitely have a claim. I think he'll have a claim because he unified. He's beating Hall of Famer. He'll be Ring Magazine champion. Fuck, he might be. He might be. He might. He might. I mean, that's not a small accomplishment to have that name on your resume. You know? Manny Pacquiao. He might. But... Josh Taylor won undisputed, so it, 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 there's always, there's still gonna be a claim. The only way I really feel like um, Taylor or Spence or Crawford or any of these guys, any of these guys could can, can really take the throne. They gotta fight each other. Um, I can't wait for Bud versus Spence to go down. BT gives Spence no credit. Spence can beat many per BT. Um, but he beat an old man. Spence beats Bud. He waited too long. Nah, that's not true. First of all, look, I want Spence to fight Crawford because I, I actually want to know. I want to know who's the better between, between the two. It's not my fault that that Earl Spence has not kept that same energy since he's got since since Terrence Crawford's out of 147. Earl's the one that's always moving the goalposts. Earl and his people and PBC and, and and all them folks over there. It's always it's them. They don't they don't want the fight to happen. And Earl don't want the fight to happen because Tan's going to beat the brakes off Earl. And Earl knows that better than everybody. He don't want that smoke. Um, if he beats if he beats Manny, credit to him. If he beats Terrence, credit to him. You know, he's got to actually fight Terrence, though. He's got to he's got to go and, 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 and where, 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 where's my pen at? Where's my pen at? Y'all got to be fired up. Where, 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 where's my American flag pen at? I can't, I can't find my pen. Earl Spence, if he wins this fight, look. He gotta stop being a diva. If he wins this fight, and he's gotta take take the damn pen, and he gotta sign the contract. He gotta do this. I'm I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you about Earl Spence when I said to Canelo with Demetrius Andre. He gotta take the damn pen, and he gotta stroke 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 the paper with his right hand or his left hand or whatever hand he writes with, and fight Terence Crawford. That's that's all. That's all it is, man. I don't hate Earl Spence. I actually like. I'm actually an Earl Spence fan. 
I just don't like how he's been acting like a straight diva these last couple years. But I'm a, I'm a fan of his. And I was, I, was, I was a fan of Earl Spencer before most of you even know who the hell he was. Not talking to you specifically, Lawrence. I'm saying most people in general. Like, I watched Earl Spence when he fought Emmanuel Larte. Most people don't even know about that fight when, when Emmanuel Larte put, the, put Earl Spence on his ass. Felipe says, answer yes or no, though. Will he be pound for pound number one? No. No. Because I feel like he still, he, he still got to do more. He, you can't. You can't. Okay, beating Pacquiao is an amazing accomplishment. He'll be Ring Magazine champion. God bless the man. But you can't have Terrence Crawford just sitting right there in your division and you not fighting him and me put you power pound. That just it's just not it's not gonna work like that. Now if he beats, I'll tell you this: if Earl wanna be power pound, he if he beats Manny and Crawford, Manny and Crawford, then he's the undisputed number one pound for pound uh, fighter in boxing. Straight up, straight up. Hiro. And then Felipe, Felipe, thank you, Felipe, again. For, thank you, Hyro and Felipe for the super chats. Uh, Felipe with the four dollar ninety nine super chat says, uh, "Hyro, Manny just won a championship in a stacked division last year. Donaire was old too and a champion. You can't call a guy old when he's at the top." Yeah, it's true. And listen, I'm not. Call, listen, I've never said Manny Pacquiao is old. I think Manny Pacquiao is still one of the best fighters out there today. Um, and I think this is a very dangerous fight for for Spence and even if Crawford. Y'all know how highly I rate Crawford. Even a Crawford fight, man, it'd be, it's, it's, a, it's an extremely dangerous fight for him, too. Manny Pacquiao is capable on his day of, give, of beating any welterweight in the world. To this very day. To this day. In my Deontay Wilder voice. Yeah, that, that's what I'm worried about. Shout, shout out to Free Hoover. Shout out to Free Hoover. He says, if Spence beats Manny Pacquiao, he'll just become a bigger diva. And that's what I'm worried about. I'm, I'm worried about that. That's why I want Manny to win, man. Because I know, I know, I already know what's gonna come. I, I, the, 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 I'm gonna predict the future. I'm, I'm gonna get my crystal ball ready, and I'm gonna predict the future. Okay. Let's just say Errol Spence has this, a star-making performance of the highest order. He breaks down Manny Pacquiao and retires that man. Right. He'll be champion and whatnot. He's gonna go to Terence Crawford and say, "You gotta take 80-20. I'm not fighting you." Right. He's he, he gonna say, "You you need to take 90-10, 80-20." And I'm not fighting you. Meanwhile, Terrence Crawford, the undisputed champion. You know, this isn't like Riddick Bull and Lennox Lewis when Lennox Lewis was a nobody when Riddick Bull was the man. No, no, no. Freaking Terrence Crawford is, is, is already undisputed champion. What you're trying to do, Terrence Crawford been did that already. So what's going to happen is if Errol wins this fight, he's just going to win the fight, price himself out, and move up to 154. That's what's going to happen. I'm going to predict the future. This fight won't happen. And uh, Terrence Crawford will have to fight Josh Taylor. And then he might fuck around and lose to Josh Taylor. And then if he loses to Josh Taylor, they're going to say Terrence Crawford was trash. All right, Isaac. Good seeing you, champ. How is Earl Spence a diva? Please explain. Okay, Felipe, I'm going to explain it to you. So, Earl Spence turned pro as a welterweight. Terrence Crawford turned pro as a lightweight. Terrence Crawford scaled all these weight classes, won titles, was undisputed, right? And then he... And then, and then with Terrence, right? Terrence... Made his intentions very clear before um, before he moved up to the division in 2018 or whatever it was. He wanted to fight. He wanted to fight Earl Spence. And when 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 Earl Spence got wind of that, Earl Spence said, "Okay, get a belt and I will fight you." Okay, so he got a belt. Right. Once he gets the belt, then then he says, then he says, "Oh well, uh, he's on the wrong side of the street. He needs to come to uh, Fox and PBC." I, I don't fight for top rank ESPN. I fight for Fox and, and, and PBC. So then um then he moved the goalpost again. And so like he gets, he hasn't kept that same energy. You know, and then 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 he's saying, oh well, he gotta take 70-30, he gotta go here, he gotta do this, he gotta do that. He don't wanna fight. He doesn't wanna fight. He has the energy and the body language of a fighter that does not wanna fight. Because it was no issue, it was no issue for Earl finding everybody else. And there, there's never been a problem for Earl going to the UK. He went to a whole country for Kel Brook. He went to a whole country, and I've been on them damn British flights. He went to a whole country. He went to a whole different continent to fight Kel Brook. But he won't even, he won't even, he won't even think about fighting Terrence Crawford. Because he won't. Pyro with the super chat. Thank you, Pyro. He says, the science don't make sense. I like many, but I see robbery and Felipe. Loma's going to lose really bad. Oh, let's go. Talk to him, Pyro. Talk to this man. Talk to this man.
because my this, Felipe is the ultimate Lomachenko fan. He, 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 he's over here talking about, oh, uh, uh, the rematch is going to be different. They're going to be different. T.F. Lopez is going to put that dude on a stretcher. It's coming. I mean, I don't wish that on Lomachenko, but but he's not being he's not being Tiafimo. Spence versus Pacquiao is passing of the torch. If you hate Spence, then you're not a boxing fan, and I agree with you. If you hate Spence, you're not a boxing fan. I don't hate Spence. I just call it, I just call it how I see it. He doesn't want to fight Terence Crawford, and never has wanted to fight Terence Crawford. That's not something he's interested in. But I wish him the best of luck on this fight. If he wins, God bless him. You know he's come a long way in his career. Um, I'm happy for him. You know I'm happy. I'm happy he's fighting Manny Pacquiao. There's, 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 there's no there's no hate here for Earl Spence. I love Earl Spence. I met Earl Spence. I've interviewed Earl Spence. Earl Spence has did an intro for my channel. I fucking love Earl Spence. I just don't like. I don't like how it's the same. It, I'm. It, it's like the same thing with Demetrius Andre and Canelo. People say Earl Spence is this and he's that, and I think Earl Spence is a, is a fantastic fighter. People say Canelo is all this and that, and I think Canelo is a fantastic fighter, although I think he's a bit overrated. But he's still a fantastic fighter. But then when it comes time to fight, the guys that people want to see them that people want to see them fight, they got a million excuses, a million excuses, a million and one excuses as to why the fight can't happen. So that's what it is. I'm just saying Lomachenko don't like those body shots. Oof, you know he don't. He don't like those body shots. You 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 you're talking to him, Haro. You you telling him the truth. You telling him the truth, Haro. You telling him the truth. Lomachenko don't like them body shots. You know Nakatani got his ass beat badly. You know he he was very disappointing in that fight with uh, Lomachenko. But um, the handful of times, like the five, the, the, the four, three or four times that Nakatani actually decided to throw body shots, Lomachenko stepped back and didn't and didn't like those body shots. And if Tio goes down there, it, it'll be the same problem. Times ten. A bigger Mayweather with more power, Freddie Roach. Well, who he said about Spencer Crawford? I'm. Crawford would punish this version of Pacquiao. Not a doubt in my mind. Perhaps so. I, I think. I think. I think Crawford would beat Pacquiao myself. Um. And one thing that's annoying me is how you're saying Canelo is ducking Demetrius Andre, bro. And Bubu Andre would get dog walked. Okay. Let, I want to see it. I want to see the fight. I don't care whether he wins or loses. I just want to see the damn fight. I I, I don't think he will uh, do that to Demetrius Andre. And, and and neither does Canelo. Because if he did, he would have fought him like six years ago. Or, or maybe three years ago. Or four years ago. When he had all those other opportunities to fight him. So if you hate what I'm saying so much. Okay. If, if you hate what I'm saying so much. Then, um, you know, tell Canelo, tell Canelo to find his balls, to tell him to take his balls out of Eddie Reynoso's purse and fight, and fight uh, Demetrius Andre. If Crawford would beat Pac-Man, you would give him number one pound for pound. So why not Spence? That's bias. Spence has never been undisputed. Spence, if, okay, hi hypothetically, right? Let's, let's just remove Spence from the fight and let's insert Crawford. If Crawford, if Crawford was in this fight with Pacquiao... And he beat Pacquiao. He that he he would have that one on his resume. He would have been undisputed champion at 140, and he would have been uh, Ring Magazine champion in multiple weight classes. He'd be a more accomplished fighter than Earl Spence, times ten. Even though he's a more accomplished fighter than Earl Spence right now as we speak, he'd just be more accomplished than Earl Spence times like ten hundred if he fought Manny Pacquiao and beat him. So it's different. Errol Spence hasn't accomplished much as Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford has scale weight classes. He's gone undisputed. He's been Ring Magazine champion already. What, what Errol Spence is attempting to do on this fight, Pacquiao, Terrence Crawford already been did. That's not me being biased. That's just me knowing the facts and applying them as such. Now, like I told you, if Spence beats Pacquiao and... Goes undisputed and, and beats Crawford, then then I, there's not a damn thing I could say. I gotta I gotta give that man his just due. Why did Bubu Andre pull out of the Charlo fight? It's a genuine question. What happened? It was a money situation. He was getting less money than the guys in the undercard, and on top of that, you know, Bubu Andre, and it was his fault. Bubu Andre signed, he, he was signed to two promoters at the same time. He was signed to Rock Nation and Banner Promotions. So then like they pulled him out the fight and 
it was a it's, it was a long it was a long complicated thing with his promotional team but demetrius andrade has been in prime position to fight canelo multiple times and canelo alvarez has shown time and time again that he doesn't want the smoke like it's, it's undeniable that canelo is ducking him it's undeniable what, what what will be the first and then thank you jesus for commenting this because I, I i kept seeing it but i kept I, I kept forgetting to um respond um what will be the first boxing event at raider stadium it's a great question well it's not going to be pacquiao spence and it's not going to be free versus wilder anymore it was supposed to be but i don't know i have no clue that's, that's, maybe um maybe 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 if joshua fights wilder or something like that or maybe like javante davis versus ryan garcia or something like that and there you go flip beat me to it already that, that, that that's probably Hopkins was undisputed was undisputed a decade ago. He ain't on the pound for pound list. Bernard Hopkins is retired, Felipe. What are you talking about? Charlo has done way more than Bubu Andre. Or Canelo. Canelo has done way more than Bubu Andre. He has. You're right. But he's also beaten a lot of undefeated champions, and people give him credit for beating undefeated champions. And all of a sudden, when it comes to Demetrius Andre, nobody cares about undefeated champions no more because he sucks, according to people. He even got dropped by Mean Machine. Virgil might fuck around and get dropped by Mean Machine. Mean, mean, machine, mean machine is good. Mean Machine's a good fighter. Um, he still he stopped Mean Machine, so it don't matter. You know, it was great. He got, he got dropped, but he, he, he saw how he responded. He responded with a knockout. Errol Spence got dropped by Emmanuel Larte. No, Spence had Felipe, you're wrong. Spence got dropped when he was a prospect. He fought, he fought a fighter named Emmanuel Larte on Fox, like when he was like in his fifth or sixth fighter or something like that, and he got put on his ass by a, a, a guy that never even made it to the world class level of boxing. So at least when Terrence Carter got dropped, he got dropped by a guy who's ranked. He got dropped by a guy who's who's an Olympian. He got dropped by a good credible welterweight. Spence got dropped by Cannon Fodder opposition. He said a decade ago. I'm talking about now. Well, was was, was it a decade ago? Because what? When, when, when did Earl Spence turn pro? Earl Spence turned pro like in what? 2014, 2015? That was like seven years ago. It wasn't a decade ago. It was, it was close to a decade ago, but it wasn't a decade ago. BT, PBC might have a big crowd because WWE is having SummerSlam at Raider Stadium the same day as... Oh, man. Oh, man. That, 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 that's big competition. But it's your boy BT, Brendan Taylor, the Untouchable True School Sports Empire, getting in some some nice, chill Monday night boxing talk with you guys. Make sure y'all smash that like button. Yeah, bro. Everybody always talks about Kavaluskis like he's a bum. Kavaluskis ain't no bum. Kavaluskis would be a lot of guys at welterweight. And you know what? I'm very excited to see this um, Virgil Ortiz fight. I'm gassed for this Virgil Ortiz fight. Um, you know, because look, Virgil wants those big fights. If he can knock out Kavalus, because I don't see any reason why he can't get Crawford right after this fight. So we're going to see, you know, I asked, I, I had a chance to interview Golden Boy matchmaker Roberto Diaz himself. And, um, Roberto Diaz, I asked him, say, Hey, could, could, could we, could, could, could we get that fight? And he was like, Hey, you know, if, if um, we, we got to sit down and talk about it. But they, they said, he said he was willing to put Virgil in there with him and, the fact that he's matching him up with a guy like Kavaluskis at this stage of his career, it, yeah, absolutely. Um, fuck. Hey, Hiro. Hiro, if you're there, Hiro, could you tell, tell, because I'm not on my phone. Hiro, in the comment section, could, could somebody drop my Instagram, uh, my Instagram uh, name in the comments down below? It's uh, ju just a kid from Dania. But I know you probably won't know how to spell Dania. Hyrule, if you're here, drop it in the comments so that Sh Shakur could follow me or whatever. Um, BT, have you ever met Matchrooms, Eric, Batier? I, I might have. I mean, I meet people all the time, but I don't always remember their names. Um, what does he do for Matchroom? Is he like a matchmaker? Or is he like a... Because I met, I met one guy from Matchroom. I don't remember his name, but... I met one guy from Matchroom who does. Um, he's like the strength. He's like he's like the strength and conditioning coach 
for Matchroom Boxing. But I don't remember his name. Floyd is the best fighter ever. There's no debate. No, there's definitely a debate. There's always a debate. You can always debate. But Floyd is definitely one of the greatest of all time. I'm not going to refute that. Floyd's the truth. Do you think Manny Pacquiao has done PEDs before BT? Probably, yeah. I mean, there's no proof that says he... Like, he's never tested positive PEDs and whatnot. But at the same time, knowing what I know about boxing now... You don't got to test positive for PEDs to be doing PEDs, you know. Boxing, a lot of times, can pick and choose who they want to report is on this shit and who's not on this shit. You know, and all that comes down to, you know, financially, who's making who, what money. You know, Floyd was definitely on, Floyd was on PEDs, though. Floyd, Floyd had Memo Heredia in his corner. He had, he had one of the biggest PED gurus in sports in his corner, and Memo Heredia. You know, Memo Heredia... You know, for those of you who don't know much about Memo Heredia's background outside of boxing, Memo Heredia got caught in the Marion Jones scandal. If you guys remember Marion Jones, the, 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 the female track star in the Olympics, she got busted with PEDs in the, in the 2004 Olympics. Memo Heredia was behind all that. And Memo, Memo Heredia worked with um, uh, Floyd. And Memo, Memo Heredia is still working with a lot of fighters these days. But honestly, look. I'm almost to a point with boxing where like I'm not even I can't even condemn fighters for PED use because it's so prevalent you almost need PEDs to be on an even playing field. And on top of that, you need PEDs because as far as recovery goes, you might need PEDs because the, the, these these training camps are no joke. These training camps are no joke. It's, it's a lot of wear and tear on the body. Like I I I I've always seen bits and pieces. Of training camps, like going to gym and stuff. But like the last when I was in Vegas, I actually saw a whole entire training camp. I actually got, I actually lived it. I lived it. I was with particular fighters every day, watching their training camps. And it's I, I, it got to a point where I was watching how much wear and tear there was on their body, and I'm like, damn, these guys almost need PEDs just to just to just to just to get through the damn day, because you you know muscles are being torn. It's a lot of wear and tear on the body. Um a lot man Spence was hurt I don't believe he was dropped he got dropped against Larte you know I'm gonna make sure I'm not tripping I'm gonna go Google that right now I want a YouTube right now while I'm talking to you cause I'm pretty sure Emmanuel Larte put him on his ass but I could be tripping Hyrule says BT when I promote when I start promoting, we might get PEDs for you to go to 118. Oh my god. I couldn't imagine me on PEDs. That'd be crazy. Um Jesus is the one. Shout out to everyone here, man. Seeing Rigo in the gym, do you think he has enough to beat Casimiro BT? <sighs> yeah, he's got just enough, but to me that's a pick and fight. Like, that's a pick and fight because Casemiro is, um, or Rigondeau, when you can touch him, is chinny. And Rigondeau is, uh, his legs aren't what they used to be. So now he's at a stage of his career where he's got to trade more. And that's why when you look at a lot of these fights um, that he has now, he's exchanging a lot more. Did he get rocked or did he get dropped? I think he's got rocked. Jesus is the one. Let me see. Oh, I'm tripping. Okay, he didn't get dropped. He didn't get dropped against Latte. He got hurt. I'm tripping. I'm wrong. He, he got hurt. So I got I to I get my facts straight. He got hurt. He didn't get dropped by him. Oh, my God. Yeah, Pedro Diaz. I'm going to tell you this. Pedro Diaz camps. Pedro Diaz's camps. Are the most grueling training camps I've ever seen in my life. Like, um, oh my god, just a regular day in the gym is grueling in the Pedro Diaz uh, at Mundo Boxing Gym. That's why all of his fighters, well, no matter what skill level they are, they're always prepared to fight. So that's why you know his fighters always have a great chance to win because they train to win. That's that, that's 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 literally the motto of the gym. The motto of the gym is you train to win. 
Why do they make a big deal of boxers getting hurt or drop? It's boxing. It happens. Exactly. I, I don't understand why everybody makes a big deal about it. They're like, oh, yeah, well, you know. And it, 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 makes, it, it, it gets me pissed off to no end when people say, oh, yeah, well, you know, such and such would lose to such and such because he got dropped in sparring. He lost, um, <laughs> he lost the sparring. Oh, man, Felipe, he says he didn't get dropped, so your whole argument was based on misinformation. So is he pound for pound? Um, is he pound for pound after Manny Pacquiao? No, man, he's not. He's not. Gotta be Crawford. You can't You can't have Terrence Crawford in your weight class. And fuck, you know what? I'll keep the same as your Crawford. He gotta beat Pacquiao and Spence, too. Or he can be, or if, if Pacquiao's still around and wants to fight him, he gotta beat them, too. He said, bro, you're contradicting yourself. No, he didn't get dropped. I went, I went back and I checked it. I, I actually went back and I double checked it just to make sure that I wasn't tripping. And apparently, it turns out I was tripping. He did get rocked, though. He got hit with a ridiculous right hook. And I don't know how the hell he didn't get dropped. But yeah. Um, Your whole argument was based on vibration. So is he pound for pound? I look. I look. I'm not gonna get mad at anybody if they put him power pound number one against Pacquiao, but for me personally, no, I think he's gotta go undisputed. At least. You can't like you can't go pound for pound right now and not be at least be undisputed. And if you're not gonna be undisputed, you better have a damn good resume. Like you better have some like Chocolatito esque like resume. Gary Russell versus Leo Santa Cruz, who you got? Is, is that gonna happen? Um I'll go with um I'll go with Gary Russell. I like I like Gary in that fight. You know, you, 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 first of all, Gary's going to be fresh because Gary fights like once every two years, once every 18 months. I'm not ducking your argument. I'm not ducking your argument. I, I, I admitted that I was wrong and I admitted that uh, Earl Spence didn't get dropped because I went out and I was humble enough to go recheck the fight, recheck the highlights. And he didn't get dropped. Um, what was the argument anyway? I think he's got to be Terrence Crawford and vice versa. At this point, Terrence Crawford's so inactive, he needs to beat Earl Spence to be pound for pound. Josh Taylor, Josh Taylor, Josh Taylor and Inouye are, are really the only two guys right now that are doing the things they got to do to have a claim, you know, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Love you too, Felipe. God bless. Go, go enjoy the new Space Jam. I got to watch Space Jam 2 whenever get a chance hopefully go enjoy it thank you felipe shout out to felipe aka the uh, jefe you know hark detailing go 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 check out hark detailing out there in uh grand prairie texas for all your automotive needs you know uh 242 south baghdad road go 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 over there <laughs> go over there and get, get, and get and felipe will get you right tell him i sent you will you watch the olympics absolutely um when is the olympics when is the olympics Is Charlo versus Castaño rematch pay per view worthy? Nah, I don't think so. How many pay per views do you think would sell? Because they, they they would have to sell a lot of pay per views to break even. And do you think they would even sell enough pay per views to break, make their break even point? BT people say Loma's shoulder was hurt, but his forward ain't his sh <laughs> his his shoulder his flash forward had nothing on Tio. You damn right, Hiro. Thank you. Lomachenko's shoulder was hurt, but that left hand, that left hand wasn't hurt. And the freaking and the freaking and his footwork with it wasn't hurt. So thank you. BT go on Safari and go on the Gohara free movie site. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll check it out when I when I get a chance. All I know is after this live is over, I'm about to I'm about to get on my scooter. I'm gonna drive down to Dania Beach and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna go smoke my last cigar because I bought three. I bought three cigars, um, like in March, and then I, I didn't smoke any of my cigars because I was out of town, and I smoked two of them. I smoked one of them before I left. I smoked one of them when I got back. I'm gonna smoke my last one tonight, and then we're not gonna get any cigars for a while. <laughs> you got jokes, Hiro. He says, "I wonder if Trevor Bryan versus Stavern broke even." You know what, Hiro? Considering how bad the um, 
the production was, like the the the, the quality of production was, I would I I wouldn't be surprised if they made a profit. I don't I don't think Don King invested that much money into that show. I, I would not be the least bit surprised if Don King pulled the wool over our a wool over our eyes and found a way to get that fight to break even. Who do you like in the Lomachenko Lopez rematch? I I, I like Lopez. I, I think he I think he's got Lomachenko's number. But you know, Lomachenko showed had a had a amazing performance his last fight out. And um You know, you never know. You never know. Rematches always are rematches are always a little bit different. BT Tio beats Loma eight to four. Tio beat Loma eight. Yeah, I I, I had it, I had it scored the same way. 116, 112. You know, I thought he beat him pretty soundly. Pretty soundly. It was a fight where I don't think he I, I, Lomachenko. It took him forever to get to get out of like he was he was parked in neutral. He never he never got his foot out of out of neutral. You know, he was he was downloading the information and you know he he must have been downloading with that Windows ninety eight speed because it wasn't you know he he took a while to really start committing to any sort of offense and that was. Due in large part to T from Lopez establishing his range, establishing his distance, and not allowing Lomachenko to get that sidestep to get into rhythm. Because Lomachenko is a very rhythmic fighter. Um, and once he gets into that rhythm, he's very hard to beat. But if you can kind of break his rhythm in any way, whether it's tying him up, using dirty tactics, cutting off that sidestep, he becomes a very, a much more beatable fighter. You saw against Nakatani. Nakatani couldn't do nothing with him because Lomachenko wasn't rhythm. He was able to sidestep, do the, the normal Lomachenko thing. You know, with Lopez, he can't do that. Or he couldn't do it in the first fight. Maybe he'll do it in the rematch, but he, could, he couldn't do it in the first fight. Yeah, man. But I think on that note, guys, I'm going I'm to get up on out of here. You know, I just wanted to uh, talk a little bit and um, just talk to you guys for a little bit and just, you know, get some thoughts on boxing out there. You know, because the only boxing we have going on this week, we got the, the Showbox card on Friday, which is going to feature um, Isaiah Steen, who's a... Devin Haney, promotions fighter, prospect. Um, I'll, I'll probably check that out, but I won't go live for it. Uh, we're not, not going to go live. Um, I'm not going to go live for a fight until the Granados, um, Connor Ben fight. Uh, Shakur Murray says, "I'm gonna follow you now. When are you doing this again?" I'll probably be live, not tomorrow, but uh, probably Wednesday. Probably sometime in the middle of the week, Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday, I'll be live around this exact time. So you know, look out, for just. Put the notifications on, and when I'm live, you'll see it pop up. But I think on that note, guys, I'm going to get on out of here. Thank you guys for stopping by the live. Uh, you guys take care of yourself. God bless everyone. Um, check out all the content on the channel. I, I shot like six or seven videos like within the last day or so, but I haven't edited them. So there's a lot of videos coming out here. There's a lot of videos that I've already dropped, so go check those out if you're new to the channel. And like I say in every single one of these videos, you can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just kidding. So until next time, take care, guys.